you think about living in an RV or a van or any other residential vehicle, what comes to mind for the type of life that you might have living on the road? Are you thinking of all the hashtag van life moments, the beautiful sunsets, the beautiful scenery, visiting national parks, visiting the cities, whatever it is that is on your bucket list? Or do you think of something that I think might be a little bit more realistic? I talk a lot on my channel about the realities of RV life. And one of the questions I get asked the most Oh, a couple couple of them here is don't you get bored and what do you do all day and some people st still think that it's one giant vacation so I thought it'd be a lot of fun today to take you through an average day in my RV life from the time I get up in the morning to the time I go to bed to show you what a real RV life looks like what real RV life looks like all right so let's go ahead and get started there ain't nobody gonna do it for you got to mind your own One of the best things about RV life and being self-employed is that I don't have to set an alarm clock. So I usually get up between seven and eight o'clock, start my day with a nice cup of coffee, and then spend the first hour, two hours, depending on the weather, how, how comfortable it is outside, outside with Sadie. I play with Sadie, we throw the ball around, we wander around camp with my coffee, and then I go for a walk. I try to get in a couple miles in the morning, depending again on what season it is. So I, I try to spend at least two hours outside in the morning before I begin my my uh, work day. Then what I do is I try to do something to get my brain moving. And that's either doing my Wordle first thing in the morning, but oftentimes I wait to do my Wordle. And one of my favorite ways to get my brain started first thing in the morning is to do a simple 10 or 15 minute Spanish lesson with Babbel. I'm going to be going to Mexico next year and Babbel has been an amazing app for me to learn Spanish. I love that it has all these interactive tools so that I can listen to the language, I can speak the language, there are flashcards, and there is even writing so that I can learn how to write the language as well. One of the things I really love about Babbel is that it allows me to tailor my lessons to my needs. So whether you're going to another country to work or for vacation, for business, or even for a relationship, for love, your lessons are going to be tailored to your needs so that you're only learning the language that you're going to be using. So it's super quick, it's super easy, it's interactive, and it's even a lot of fun. So it is Estados Unidos. You made it sound so easy. I love that Babbel gives me multiple ways to learn. There are podcasts, there are lessons, there are classes with real life teachers. So you can really tailor it to your learning style. And it's just super easy. In 10 minutes a day, you can be speaking a new language in just a few weeks. I have made so much progress, even just doing 10 minute lessons here and there. So I'm excited about going to Mexico and putting it to the test. And also as uh, the sponsor of today's video, Babbel Babbel is giving any one of my audience members who wants to learn a new language. By the way, tell me what language you want to learn and why in the comments section below. Let me know what language. And if you're serious about it, you can get up to 60% off your subscription by using the link in the video description now. So 60% off is a great deal if you want to learn a new language because you have travel plans in the future or you just want to exercise your brain like I do. And once I've, once my brain is wake, woken up, then I usually sit down to start my work day. And my work day really varies depending on what I have going on, how much traveling I've been doing. So this is all what I do on my daily RV life when I'm not traveling. Travel days are a whole different story, but this is when I've been sitting in one spot for a while. I'm getting caught up on work. So I'm usually starting work by 11 o'clock in the afternoon. And I've said before in other videos, uh, you know, my job as a full-time YouTube creator is a lot more than just making videos. There's a social media, there are newsletters, there are blogs, there are taxes, there are just a million things. Anybody who's ever run a business, there are a million things that I have to do um, just to keep my business running and to keep this channel and my brand, Carolyn's RV Life, uh, growing and as successful as it has become. So I usually start work around uh, by 11 o'clock at the latest and sometimes uh, to get to wet my um, online world, you know, to get things started. Sometimes I just mess around and see what the news is and what Twitter is before I totally dive into my work. And then 
Usually by one o'clock I'm ready to eat so I'll get up and I'll make breakfast and I might take Sadie outside again and then I'll sit down and I'll work again till four or five o'clock usually. Again it depends on what I have going on and then I make some dinner, uh, clean up the kitchen and I might do a little bit more work if I have comments to read, if I have emails to uh, answer, if I have patron comments to get to, uh, social media. I'm pretty much still working after dinner for a couple hours doing a little uh, loose ends of social media and things like that and then I'll just settle in and watch some TV. I love to watch TV. I don't have a TV in my RV. I stream everything on my computer either Netflix or Hulu or all the other uh, HBO, Showtime, Prime, you name it. Uh, so I do like to watch TV. That's just kind of how I veg out at the end of the day, especially if I'm editing all day. Sundays are a really, really long day for me because I, I can now edit my Sunday videos in one day. It used to take me like three days, uh, but that takes a lot out of me and I'm brain dead by the end of the day and all I want to do is veg out on some TV. So that's what I do uh, for a couple hours and then I might go to bed and maybe do, maybe do a little reading. Uh, um, I am trying to write as well. I'm still trying to work on my uh, memoir. So I try to also get that done in the morning. Um, I take another walk with Sadie after dinner. I forgot to mention that. So we usually try to get at least another mile, depending on where we are. Again, depending on weather and things like that. Uh, try to get at least another 20 minutes, half hour walk in with Sadie at the end of the day. So what do you think? Do you think there's room in there to be bored? <laughs> and then if, I, if I'm if i lucky enough to stay in one spot for two weeks, uh, I'm on the move again. And that means another day, two days, three days, whatever, of travel. And then that adds a whole other layer of, of uh, activity. There's just no time in my life to be bored. Maybe if you're retired and you don't have to work, but uh, most of the people I know who are about my age on the road still have to work, and work consumes hours and hours and hours of their time. So the hashtag van life isn't necessarily for people like us. Uh, you know, the harsh reality is we spend way too many hours still in front of the computer, and I'm thinking about all my friends who still work the hours and hours and hours inside the RV on the computer when we would much rather be out hiking and sightseeing and picnicking and having fires and things like that. That, you know, but uh, but we still have to work. So that's just the reality of what it looks like to live on the road. You know, I knew know a lot of people who don't have to work and they have hobbies. They do geocaching. They do art. They do write. They do knitting, photography, and things like that. And a lot of people who are living on the road do like to travel a lot and do all the national parks and do a lot of hiking and go visit museums and things like that. Unfortunately, when I'm traveling. I often don't have the energy and the time really to do that being alone and having to leave Sadie behind and also because it, it, there's always like tick 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 every hour that I'm spending doing something on the road is every hour that I'm not working and that I'm going to have to make up for later so if anybody is still working age and not looking at retirement and thinking about hit the road hitting the road Hashtag, you're going to have hashtag van life moments, but that's not going to be the majority of your life, unfortunately. The reality is, I've said this a million times, RV life is real life. You can't run away from your responsibilities. You can't run away from adulting. You still have to do all the things that you uh, had to do in your sticks and bricks. The only difference is you get to choose where you do it. <laughs> And sometimes that's not even that great, right? Because you got noise around you and you have to stay at a truck stop or a Walmart or whatever. Uh, but that's that's the reality. That's what my day looks like. Uh, I, I don't take many days off. I actually just had one day recently where I didn't work for the entire day, which is very rare. It's just the... Um, um, nature of running your own business and being an entrepreneur. It's very hard to just let it go. You can't just turn off the computer and be done with it. It's a constant thing. So uh, that is just the reality of anybody who does this the way I do. So tell me what you think. Are you a little surprised that RV life is real life and not um, van life and that it's not quite as glamorous as some on social media make it seem? And what is your RV life going to look like when you live on the road? Let me know in the comments section below. Is it going to look a lot like mine or is it going to look more like hashtag van life? Are you going to be out there on vacation 
And even if you don't have to work, it's still not going to be a vacation, but that's a whole other video. All right. So leave your comments below. Be sure to check your subscriptions. If you think you're subscribed to my channel, go ahead and double check right now because YouTube unsubscribes people. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Please subscribe if you enjoy my content. It really, really, really helps a lot. All right. I hope you found this helpful or interesting or entertaining, and I'll see you next time. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.